All right, let's talk about web storage. So there's two different versions of this. There's local storage and session storage. They both have the exact same methods, the same property. The difference between them is that session storage gets deleted when you close the browser, when you uh, close the tab, if you log out of the website, clear your session, uh, clear your cache, things like that. Local storage stays in there until you go into the settings for the browser and delete it, or you um, use one of the methods to remove one or more items that you don't want to have. So these are the two different types, local storage and session storage. Let's look at the uh, different methods that we've got here. Uh, both of them exist inside the window object, so we can start typing window.localStorage, window.sessionStorage to access either one of them, or like everything else that is a child of the window object in the browser, we can just type local storage or just type session storage. Um, I'm going to use local storage for all these examples just because the code is the exact same for both of them. The only difference is how long the storage sticks around. Now if you ever want to see the storage in the browser, if you uh, open up the web page that you're currently looking at and inspect down here, right click and go to the inspect menu to bring up the console. So we've got elements console, the network we've talked about in other videos, the application tab. Inside of here we've got local storage and session storage and you can see there is the domain that we're currently looking at. If I click on that, you can see it's currently empty. There's a list for keys and a list for values. And that's what local storage and session storage are. It's a bunch of key value pairs. It's kind of like creating a whole bunch of variables and you can put whatever you want in the variable. So you can put a string, you can put a number, you can put a boolean, you can put an object, you can put an array, you can put multi-dimensional objects that contain arrays. The only limitation is that when the value itself actually gets placed into local storage, it has to be put in there as a string. So everything that goes in there is going to be a string. And that's what's going to bring us to our JSON object. There's a JSON object in JavaScript that allows us to convert objects to strings or arrays to strings, and then from strings back to the original object, string, array, boolean, whatever it was. So we'll look at uh, using this as well. All right. First of all, basic things. How do I put something into local storage? There is a set item method that's going to ask for a name and a value. So this is the key and the value. So I could do something like, dude, that is my key, and the value of that is going to be Jeffrey Lebowski. There we go. That will save in local storage. So I refresh this. There we go. There's the key, there's the value. If I ever want to retrieve this, I'm going to be logging that out, and I'm going to retrieve from local storage get item, and I want to get the one called dude. Console. There it is. So that was the value that was in there with the key dude. So this can be any string that you want to represent the value. We can put numbers, booleans, whatever you want inside there, um, high scores if you're building a game. Now, one thing I will say about this is you do want to be careful about what keys you use. If you used a key that was something like high score, high score is going to be a little bit limited in that at some point you may have two games or three games or more on your website. And at that point, high score no longer really reflects what it's going what the value is represented so if i was going to make a high score then what i would probably want to do is create a key and i would call it something like pacman high score that would be 
the key that I'd be using here. So you can see I can put a variable, and there's my high score. Refresh this, come back to application, and there we go. So I've got Jeffrey Lebowski and one two three one two three as my values. Dude and Pacman underscore high score. Those are the keys. So these are the keys that allow us to get to the values. Now I was saying before we might want to have something that's a little bit more complex. We want, might want to have a multi-dimensional thing. So we can create something that's a little bit more complex and. Let's say it's an object that has a property called name. Actually, we'll write this as proper JSON. JSON, when you're using proper JSON, the keys and values have to use double quotation marks. So, Walter and Kim would be bowling and something like weapons is an array inside of here. Let's say he's got an Uzi. Let's say he's got a pistol. I don't remember what kind of pistol that he had in the movie. Um, and of course his anger. There we go. So I've got this multi-dimensional object here. And there we are. So three properties. First two are strings third one is an array. So I've got an array inside of an object, and I want to save this as a value in local storage so I can get at it later. Local storage set item I'll just use that, and that's the variable. Now this is not going to work for us. This is not going to work because this is an object. I can't just... There. This is what I get. Object, object. Well, okay, yes. It's an object of type object. That is what we've got right here. Doesn't, doesn't really provide us with any valuable information. If I retrieve it, all I have is this string that says object, object, and I can't get back at the original values. So, the JSON object. JSON object, as you can see here by my code complete, has two different methods, parse and stringify. Parse will take an object and, well, sorry, will take the string and extract the arrays, the objects, the other actual things that you want from that. And then stringify takes an object and turns it into a string. Takes an object, takes a number, takes a boolean, takes whatever data type you have and converts that into a string, which is what we want to do here. So we're going to stringify options. Now, if I put that inside there, and refresh, there we go. This looks like the object. It is, in actual fact, just a string, but it's a string that contains all the original information. So if I want to get back at that, if I wanted to retrieve the original information, so let's original equal local storage get item and the dude, is our case sensitive? What I have retrieved here is this item, which is the string version of that object. So this will be a string. Into the console, I refresh this. There we go. That's what I originally had. That's, it looks like the object, but this is just a string. If I want the object, I will have to do the json.parse and pass it, that string, the original value from local storage, which was just a string. And I can console.log that object. 
refresh. There we go. So the first one, that was the string, and now I actually have an object that I can interact with. And with this object, I can use this as part of my code. We could say console.log weapons and it's an array, so I'll say number two. There you go. Anger. So this was item number two from the array called weapons inside of this object that was in local storage. Okay. Um, other methods that uh, exist. So we've, we've talked about set item. We use get item. These are definitely the most common ones. There is a clear method, which will erase everything. There is a remove item. And you pass in the key, and that will delete one item from local storage, session storage, whichever one you're using. Uh, there is also a key method. Key will tell you, if you pass in a number, it'll look into local storage, and if there is something in local storage, like here, this is number zero, this is number one, this is number two, so the Pac-Man high score, if I was to pass in the number two, this is the string that I would get, Pac-Man high score. So inside of a for loop, we could loop through and call key. We do local storage dot key pass in the counter for the loop. So number zero, number one, number two, and retrieve each of the names. And then with the names we could call um, get item. And the get item would use the name that we retrieved with key. Uh, it's a little bit clunky, a little bit long-winded way, but if you don't know what the names of the keys are in local storage, this is the way that you can get at them. If you do know them, which hopefully you've designed a system where you do know what the names of the keys are, then you can just use set item and get item. And that is really all there is to web storage using local or session storage and the JSON object, which is invaluable for the parse and string methods. As always, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments.